What do we know about the brain basis of categorization? Here's a question. If categories are so important and meaningful to us, are categories represented separately in the brain? So for example, some categories of information are in one part of the brain and other categories of information are in a different part of the brain? Or is everything interconnected in a way that you can't segregate the different categories? Well, it turns out that patients have been found who show a loss of abilities with a particular category of stimuli. This is called category-specific memory impairment. And what does it mean? Because of brain damage, some people lose the ability to access certain categories of information, or they have a significant decrease in their ability to access certain categories of information. And how do we know that? Well, from a classic study that involved patients who had suffered from and recovered from something called encephalitis. Encephalitis is basically a swelling of the brain. Actually, encephalitis has just been found to be relevant to the COVID virus. Some people, many people actually, who test positive for COVID, they don't just feel tired, they really have cognitive difficulties. They really struggle to pay attention to things and make decisions. It's very hard for them and it can remain difficult for them for a while. And research has just now been published to suggest that some of that difficulty may be long-term residual effects of COVID causing some swelling in the brain. Not terrible swelling in the brain, just some swelling in the brain and enough to damage a few areas. Anyway, in this classic study, they uh, found people who had suffered from significant encephalitis, significant swelling of the brain that caused damage to different parts of their brain. And they found patients who really struggled to access information related to the category of living things, but they were fine or the same as typicals in understanding and making judgments about artifacts, human-made things like cars and cups and light bulbs. Wild, right? So here are data from two subjects. Um, and what you can see is their performance in an object recognition task was pretty good with artifacts. They could look at a hammer and say hammer and a pencil and say pay pencil. But when you showed them pictures of living animals, a cat, a dog, an elephant, their performance really dropped. So this is some evidence to suggest that maybe big categories are represented in different parts of our brain or processed by mechanisms that are located in different areas of the brain. Um, that is not unrelated to the idea that maybe objects related to survival are kept in a separate special category. And why do folks think that survival relevant categories might be special or even innate? Well, think back to a good old area we haven't talked about for a while, FFA, fusiform face area. This is the area where uh, processing of faces occurs. Cells in FFA respond very strongly to faces and respond much less strongly to other categories of objects like places and houses and, and um, trees and whatnot. And folks thought, well, you know, maybe FFA is category-specific processing and understanding of faces. Now, the idea that it could be innate, ooh, that's really wild, right? But what folks have found to test that idea is they looked at how well twins could recognize faces. And there are two types of twins. There are fraternal twins that are as related as uh, siblings, brothers and sisters, for example. Right? You're born at the same time. Your genetic relatedness is the same as brothers and sisters. And then there's identical twins who are essentially clones, at least at the beginning. They have the same genes. If FFA has a genetic component, 
then identical twins should be more similar in their ability to recognize faces than fraternal twins. And that's what researchers have actually found. Identical twins are very similar in their facial recognition ability. Fraternal twins are similar, but not nearly to the extent that identical twins are similar. So maybe FFA, one way to understand FFA is as the processing of a particular category of information. And maybe because we come into this world looking for faces and dependent on things that have faces, because when we're born, we can't do much of anything. We're totally dependent on other people. Maybe the category of faces is genetically determined. Uh, other researchers thinking about categorization have tried to think about other approaches. Um, maybe the focus should be on how categories are different from each other. And different categories of information should be different from each other. For example, animals tend to have certain types of characteristics. They tend to be, have, um, they typically move, right? Unlike trees and rocks and things. And um, they have specific colors that are matched to their environment. Um, living and non-living things, artifacts, so animals and tools can also be differentiated in other ways. With tools, what's really important is the function of a tool, right? A pencil versus a hammer, they have different functions. They're used for different things. We need them for different things. And so maybe we categorize them differently based on the function. Animals tend to have a lot more similarity within the category than tools. They move around in particular ways. They have specific colors. They have eyes. They have legs, typically, that sort of thing. So hmm, let's think some more about this idea that the function might determine the category. I'm assuming you guys have heard about mirror neurons before. They were discovered in Italy in the laboratory of Rizzolatti, who's shown here. And these are cells that respond both when a monkey makes a particular action, like reaches out to grab a raisin, and the same cell will fire when the monkey sees a human or another monkey do the, perform that same action, reach out and grab a raisin. So you can think of mirror neurons as sort of categorizing things according to actions. Whether you perform the action or see the action being performed by someone else, it doesn't really matter. It's the action itself that matters. Now, how does that relate to categorization? Well, it turns out in our brains, the way we seem to categorize some information depends on how we interact with it. So for example, if you see a soccer ball and you've spent some time playing soccer or watching other people play soccer, you know that soccer ball is associated with feet. But did you know that when you see a picture, a stationary picture of a soccer ball, your motor cortex, the areas that code for your feet movements, those are active. Isn't that wild? When you see a soccer ball, the part of your brain that produces motor activity in your feet, so the part of your brain that tells your feet what to do is active, just from seeing a soccer ball. If you are shown a picture of a hammer, what part of your motor cortex is active? Well, what part of your body do you use a hammer with? Your hands. So um, this is support for the idea that maybe categories are defined by not abstract concepts, but by how we use them. And that's it for our lecture on categories and concepts. Thanks.